kid around with that camera, right? Nah. I was expecting you to like turn your laptop around. <laughs> <laughs> You are, but you know, you'll, you'll be in the no. He was hoping he's watching a computer. Do you have a video in the back of my head for like an hour? <laughs> Alright, uh, do you have any questions?
way to question back uh, state con the way that the state constructs knowledge production. But two, critical pedagogy uh, is key to rebelling against cons uh, conserve. What's this? Oh, conservative reaction. Conservative reactionary ideology and question modern power structures and societal normacies. Meaning that we see when we see the replication of these things on, on like a, an individual level. Meaning when we see institutionalized racism or institutionalized patriarchy, the only ways to break down these things are by first uh, establishing, a, establishing a way in which we can question the power structure. And the only way in which we can question that power structure is by first questioning uh, the way in which it creates truth. Meaning that this is going to be the internal link to solving that. All the other types of state institutionalized violence is going to be first having a way to access uh, that that rhetoric in that narrative. On the three, conspiracy theory and its conflict with power structures cast, a, uh, cast a doubt on official historic accounts uh, told by the state, meaning that in one instance that we were able to say, hey, like maybe this conspiracy theory or what you would deem as a conspiracy theory is true, uh, we are always going to see instances of spillover where we are forced to question the way in which the state acts uh, because of the way that, they, that uh, the way that it is normalized. And for the plan pause, uh, posits an alternative to U.S. knowledge production, and A, it creates a space for challenge, uh, meaning that it is always going to be a first step to breaking down any sort of uh, any sort of knowledge production from the United States federal government onto five. The plan takes a critical first step to deconstruct state power. Uh, a, this is in the context of this round, this is going to always be more important than political or than policy action because it's going to posit uh, that the conversation that we have in this room is, is crucial to the way in which we engage with the state, the way in which we engage with the knowledge production of the state, or the way in which we engage when the state uh, says something. It's always going to be more important than taking some sort of fiat and policy action. Okay. Uh, starting the box time. It's going to be too long. Uh, like this. In the Lancey order? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's basically just like a bunch of songs here. Right? So.
First off, theory of the ACA wins the interpretation. The affirmative is only allowed to defend the consequences of the resolution. Again, the affirmative is only allowed to defend the consequences of the resolution. The uh, visa points of violation, they don't. Uh, the, the, uh, the resolution specifically entails that the United States federal government has to substantially increase its investment, development, and use of oceanic thermal energy conversion, which is definitely not fucking Cthulhu. The C point, uh, the C sub point is the same as the first argument is uh, limits. Uh, the, the, the affirmative interpretation explodes the ground of the affirmative, of, uh, allowing them to literally uh, to solve or uh, do or solve for anything because they don't actually have to uh, like uh, or, or constrain themselves with specific restrictions. Of this Topic, but uh, the second argument is that uh, topic education is especially important for uh, for topic uh, for topic area tournaments because we only have we we've had the ability to do in depth research about uh, you know different like alternative energy uh, production measures and things like OTEC uh, uh, and but we only have the ability to talk about each one of these things once, which means that uh, we we have a unique opportunity to delve specifically into the merits of these alternative energy projects where they're not doing that. The, CISA, or the third uh, standard is uh, dogmatism, the affirmative forces. Uh, for, uh, forces a room to take uh, to uh, to take uh, reaction responsibly. It locks in the system that they reference because they don't give us the ability. It forces the negative to to, to respond, respond reaction like, oh. in reactionary yeah. ways. It, it forces the negative to respond in reactionary ways. We don't actually have the ability to prep out like I don't know conspiracies. Don't want we're supposed to be talking about alternative energy, which means that we don't have the ability to substantially engage in your posture, your idea of conspiracism, which means that there's no actually to uh, endorse any, any form of critical pedagogy when we're talking about the the merits of a discourse of conspiracism. The fourth argument is that top, uh, a topical version of the gap exists. The uh, voters. Our first is fairness. Uh, the affirmative interpretation uh, opens the floodgates for the gap, makes it irreparably fair, uh, unfair for the negative because we only have 20 minutes of prep time. We can't possibly prep for every discourse of criticism and say that possibly exists in the second uh, voter's education. Now, the uh, next off is the criticism. The ace point is, uh, or, yeah, the ace point is the primary first argument of the rule about us to inverse between the best interrogates in relation to the capital, again, the rule about us to inverse between the best interrogates in relation to capital. The second argument is that PMC is only a speed check, which means that they only have, a, they, well, yeah. Uh, they only have the representations, but the, uh, we believe that uh, yeah, our ideological representations are going to come first because uh, our ideological beliefs are, is, uh, are the justifications for why we take action on an individual or public place, uh, place in the first place. The third argument is that we believe this is especially important for education because we have to understand why we believe something to be true before we understand why, or before we understand what is true. For example, we have to understand why we act in, in, in ways to enforce governmentality before we begin to deconstruct governmentality as a system. Which is the reason why the ideology yeah. is always a prior question. Uh, the, okay, yeah. So um, the the argument here is that we have to understand why we uh, why we already understand governmentality to be a good thing before we have the ability to like deconstruct notions of governmentality. The visa point is the links. The first argument is that the app, uh, the app totally ignores the ideology uh, of state power and possibly The affirmative reference of conspiracy does not ask the proper question. The question should be how to deconstruct governmentality, but instead, uh, but instead they talk. Uh, what? The question should not be oh. how to deconstruct governmentality, but instead how we got here in the first place. Okay. The, uh, the question should not be how to deconstruct governmentality, but instead how we got here in the first place. What conditions allow for governmentality to exist, and what conditions allow for it to exercise vital political control over individuals? Their inability to actually conf uh, confront ideology locks into violent rep uh, repetitive cycles of the state. The second, uh, the second link is their particularism. You cannot uh, solve one problem. Uh, in, okay, you cannot solve one problem until you solve every problem. Uh, it solved every problem. Their, their insistence on focusing on a particular aspect of governmentality allows capital to self correct and become benevolent within the context of the affirmative. The third argument is that uh, liberal, uh, liberal uh, aspects of reform, like the affirmative, created both the system because they, they, their, their, their arguments in the framework about how their discourse of like, individual criticism is uh, the way to construct reality and get good policy is just an attempt at liberal reform that allows us to snatch power away from the big bad system, which makes us psychologically fall in love with the, uh, the impression that uh, like governmentality and capital creates because we always be, uh, feel like we have the ability to reform and make it more benevolent, which uh, just reinforces the inevitability of capitalism. The C sub point is the impacts. So the first impact is the death drive. The death drive is the psychic desire to maintain uh, the sameness of the status quo that is mediated in symbolic order through uh, you know, subjective references to stability or, uh, or, or security or safety. But this is problematic because capital uh, restructures the death drive or uh, uh, structures in a proper relation to the death drive. And we're always going to externalize our violence against the other because capital, uh, capitalist ideology uh, uh, idealizes notions of perfection while all uh, uh, exterminate. Uh, while, uh, while always exterminating difference because it doesn't uh, exist within our context of understanding and saying this. The second argument is that ethics are possible in the system of capital because whenever we endorse a capitalist ideology that prevents us from having any sort of genuine ethical deliberation because capitalism is an economic system that thrives off of prescribing value to certain objects, individuals, and actions, which means that anytime we try to answer, answer an ethical quandary, we're only going to be able to posit the uh, capitalist answer. The D point is the alternative. The alt text is to vote negative, to withdraw ideological support for capitalism. Vote negative to withdraw ideological support from capitalism. The 
Next is solvency. The first argument is that uh, capitalism maintains its dominance via, uh, via the creation of ideologically opposed groups. It renders utilitarian calculus coherent and makes ethical decision making impossible. That turns the app because they don't have the ability to act ethically whenever they support a capitalist ideology. The second argument is that this means that means the only way to actually combat capital is to withdraw and decide that there's no debate to be had about the, uh, the merits of uh, the merits of capitalism. And the third argument is they don't get any perms. The only solvency for capitalism is universal withdrawal. We want to link the perm to the solvency unless it severs the half, uh, severs the app, which is bad because it kills profound equity as a vote for education and fairness. Also, the alternative solves the affirmative because it, 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 it gets rid of the ideology which makes the, the negation and suppression of conspiracy theories possible. Which right, is so the alternative solves the affirmative because it, it actually criticizes and repositions the subject in a way that allows us to actually remove ourselves from the confines of governmentality and we understand the ideology that allows for capital to structure everydayness in the first place and allows for the, uh, you know, the state to actually like render bodies useless or unproductive or whatever and that means we're the only actual way to solve the root cause of the act. Now on the framework. First, you, uh, uh, first, there are a few contradictory problems in the framework. First, is that they're recording that discourse is real and discourse shapes reality. But then they talk about how a bad methodology leads to bad policy. But then they go on to indicate that we uh, like role playing is a ontologically violent thing to do, and we shouldn't try to interact with the government because government mentality is bad. Well, they're indicating that they need to develop a good methodology so they can have good policy and create a good form of discourse. That seems probably problematic. Whenever their end goal, the affirmative, is just to create better policy, so I don't know the government can maybe work in a better way to co-opt their conspiracy theorists. Then um, there's this is the reason why they are only particular and they get locked inside. Yeah. This is a this is a reason why they're only particular. They don't take a broader ideological or structural understanding about why capital structures things like government mentality in the first place, but rather just identify a specific problem with government mentality, say that we can fix that, and then indicate that they can resolve all the violence of the state inevitably, which is a you know problematic. They're probably not solving too fast. The next argument is that the recent point where they indicate that interrogating uh, educational production is key to understanding. This is literally all they say on this, so that means they don't have any warrant for the key solvency mechanism of the gap, which means their critical pedagogy doesn't actually have in, 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 any solvency. The uh, next argument I want is that they don't solve for their affirmative because. Uh, because they indicate that the, uh, the, the state is always going to be constructing conspiracy theories as like irrational, it's going to get shut out from any possible discussion, but then they don't, don't give any possible solvency mechanism other than like us individually repositioning ourselves in the state, which means that they don't actually cut back government power, they just uh, make themselves complacent. And the next argument is that, uh, yeah, they say they give themselves the ability to make good policy, which means there's always going to be conf uh, confining themselves to the realm of government power. The next argument is turn conspiracy is just silly white, like silly white storytelling. We need, we need to actually have a productive uh, method of counter knowledge production that like has cultural. A significance and personal struggle, like included in order to actually create a counter knowledge production that will challenge the violence that the state has done instead of talking about squids in the ocean. The next argument is that uh, what if they classify conspiracy theory? They're still buying into the uh, Western state knowledge production because they're indicating that this conspiracy theory can be real, which means that you need to reevaluate things. But what they're doing is they're still pulling the notions of uh, rationality by indicating that there are multiple reasons why you should believe that Cthulhu exists. And we have scientific evidence indicating that it does exist. And that means that you need to understand that this is a real concept, and this is all the same processes used by the state to exclude. Uh, their notion of irrational knowledge production. So really just, again, participating in government comment. The next argument is that conspiracy is going solve for minority violence because the existence of Cthulhu probably doesn't matter whenever the state just says uh, black people are disposable populations. They don't care if there's a huge squid in the ocean whenever they're literally instituting slavery uh, like in the form of the prison system. And the next argument is that their, con their, their concept of critical pedagogy is neoliberal because they're, they're indicating that their individual academia has enough to actually solve structural issues with the state. Um, is it okay that everyone back close that window? Yeah. <laughs>
responsibility yeah, of the team that would mean that we would have to be complacent in state action. Onto their framework. Your second framework argument is that the, you, you would have to have some sort of ideological uh, discussion as to why we act the way we do. We say that we would question ideology, that we would uh, question the pedagogy as to what the USFG is. We literally make arguments about why the USFG would be the hegemon and that our act actions are justified by hegemonic action, the not of the links. You say that we would ignore ideology in the status quo. We say that this is too generic to address the critique that we would always uh, be discussing ideology and we would literally make arguments about why the hegemonic ideology and the securitizing ideology of the USFG is bad and that the way that we would deconstruct this is to by questioning the ideology. We would literally allow your critique to exist basically in this space and we would allow some sort of questioning of ideology. That's why we'll always be the internal link. I'll get to those arguments a little later. The second argument is all the links level is uh, the I literally would say that we are the internal link that we would have to question first before we can solve any problems. The we don't have any access to questioning in the status quo because the USFG just calls us conspiracy theorists that uh, people in debate would be conspiracy theorists and the way that we question ideology would be conspiracy theorists but we would say that by allowing some sort of question we would always lead to your alternative. The next argument you say is we would be a literal action. You say that we would try to get to a good policy but we say that policy is bad in the school because of the USFG and the way that we question it. We don't have any analysis as to why post the BMC there would be any sort of bad policy or that there would be a government court. We say that we are in an irrational state and that would necessarily make us different from the static ideology the USFG and that there would be a thus action by the USFG because people in conspir who are conspiracy theorists, quote unquote, would be able to take action. Honor the new sheet. It's just another reason this is why we are the internal link. <coughs> the first argument I have here is that we would say the power structures would inform ideology, that we would be questioning the structures that always allow us to come first. So if we question the power structure behind the ideology of the USFG, then we have access to questioning ideology, which would mean that we have access to questioning capitalism. But the second argument I have here is that we question would start a conversation that that would jumpstart some sort of ideological change. If we are allowed to, to question this ideology, then we can start questioning ideology, or sorry, questioning the way we orient ourselves towards conspiracy theory, then we can start to question ideology. The third argument I hear is that questioning would always lead to the internalization of truth that an ideology cannot be changed on a mass level without first changing the power structure that we operate in. Actually, throw the all on top of the impacts. I'm going to throw the all. Okay. First on the alternative, we say perm do both, but mine is both day, clearly. <laughs> First is the net benefit. We say that we have an internal link to solving our main three arguments on that new sheet, but I also have two here that we would first we should say we, we should question first, and that would always lead to some sort of space being open in order to us to change the way that we orient ourselves towards capitalism. But the second argument I have here is that this would always lead to the affirmative, so that we would have guaranteed solvency. We don't necessarily know that the alternative would lead to any sort of question of power structure. We say that post world the alternative we might have a world without cap, but that doesn't mean that we question the way that the USFG operates. The disadvantage to doing the alternative alone is the transition wars. We say that we would. Have have a least co-op in your movement without questioning per person. People would always assume that the USFG knows what to do and we would give people power by allowing people to question the power structure and say that the power structure is necessarily bad. That if we allow to just deconstruct capitalism and withdraw support for capitalism immediately, that would mean that we have no access to having any sort of question ideology onto the impacts. My answer to your first impact is that we would deconstruct security logic in the way that we orient ourselves towards other people that would always be the internal link to otherization, but we also say that, also say that we would challenge the justification for committing violence against others. We, we make these arguments in our advantage about well, well, why we would be the unique, uniquely key to deconstructing state-based violence, but you don't go and, and answer those other problems. That's probably pretty bad for you. The next argument here is we well, said that you, you the, next, well, the second impact, excuse me, for your argument. We said that we would question capitalist justifications of the reason why we actually use capitalism. You just say that capitalism bad is bad. We say that the reason that we engage in capitalism is this hegemonic ideology. If we can question the reasons that we engage in capitalism, that would mean that we are always a root cause of your of any sort of impact. Onto the solvency press. <coughs> you say talk conspiracy theories are just crazy stories. We say that that would bite literally right into our arguments that we would say that you would always be a modern political thought. That would mean that you would have no access any of the arguments here that you would you would say that conspiracy people who construct conspiracies are just crazy people who are paranoid questioning, but that would mean that you would always bite our impacts and replicate the statements based violence that you discussed. The next argument you need here is that we've classified conspiracy as a conspiracy, but we say that the narrative is just an artifact that we never named it a conspiracy that you just would assume that it is, but we also say that the static ideology would assume that it is, that we would deconstruct that ideology. You say that we would not solve back for minorities, but we say that we make arguments about solving back for state based violence and the impacts that we would replicate those, that we would question state power and that that would mean that we would always increase state power and state violence, and that would be or well, not be an agent of the state at that point. It's only a minute now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and start. Okay, so I just have two quick questions. The first is what is this course called? Uh, Solving Back for Minorities. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
What informs discussion? I mean, we would say the way that we discuss things are is informed by the power structures. Specifically, that the reason that we like I my discussion right as a conspiracy theorist is called like crazy or that I'm deemed as crazy sure, sure. is informed by the power structure that tells me that I am quote crazy or like radical. And the way that we change our discourse to change our ideology would be to change the power structure that forces to uh, discuss in one way or another. Just one more question. The first argument was called press. Uh, you indicate that my argument about conspiracies being bad with counter knowledge production being good bites into your argument. So why is like refugees telling their story about nomadism as opposed to state citizenship knowledge production? Why does that bite into your arguments? Wait, what? Why, why does like forms of counter knowledge production, i.e. like refugee minority or like trans people talking about their experiences, why does that mean that that's state knowledge production? I'm not sure that I can Okay, sorry. Honestly, sorry, like no, that's that's fine. That's fine. Okay, so uh, it will be the uh, top counting argument basically on top. Uh, and then the affirmative. Um, so I still only have the app kind of on one sheet of paper. Uh, so I will just tell you arguments that I'm going for slash answering. And if there's some confusion, just like wave at me and I'll stop and keep mine. Uh, and then the K and the order uh, of the alternative and then framework links and index. And then the internal reference to the at the bottom. Oh, yeah, of course. Those are, uh, we'll put those. No, I'll talk yeah, I'll put those on top of the so right before we get to the alternative. Okay. So the order I have for you is T, the app, straight down, the new sheet from the MG, alt, press the K. Yes. Okay. Is anyone not ready? I hear it would appear that you were not uh, I'm not Number one, two, you know, the top Cali argument is very, it has a couple of implications for the debate. First, means that there's no, no reason to go negative on top of them, but also they have no other offensive arguments as a reason why you go further to the PMR based on top of them. But it also has more important implications that the fact that they, they meet our interpretation in some way means that they still try to uh, cons constrict themselves to, uh, to governmentality and its definition, that they still try to identify themselves in forms of the government. This has a couple of implications in the debate. The first, that it locks them into violent systems of governmentality where by being a subject is only ever allowed to have, uh, uh, have any sort of identity or any sort of value in relation to the sovereign, which means that. Uh, uh, it turns 100% of their arguments about how they create alternative forms of knowledge production because they don't. They create the, uh, they create new types of knowledge under the same types of knowledge production, which means that they're never actually able to access any sort of solve and secondly, no, guaranteed a uh, link to the a link to the particularism argument so on criticism because they only ever engage in that one particular reform of uh, systems of sovereignty, which means that they're never actually able to access any sort of long-term solvency of the affirmative. Now, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I would give number one. There's not a good answer to this argument in the uh, MG. I want you to extend the argument that their end goal of the affirmative build is ultimately to ultimately to create a better policy where the uh, sovereign or the federal government stops being so shitty. I think that this is the problem with the affirmative, that they are asking the wrong question. This should not be a debate about whether or not we should, we can even reform the federal government. It should be a question of, uh, uh, about whether or not systems of capital should be allowed to inform what we understand to be true and uh, untrue. Our argument is that, they, uh, our argument is that in, in a world where they still engage with the sovereign and still allow the sovereign to try and dictate what they can Considered to be a uh, top collection, considered to be solvent in action. That is how the government talent is locked in and turns 100% of uh, their arguments. Now, I want this cons the the, uh, the argument they make that conspiracies are silly by storytelling. The, arg the only argument they say is that this, uh, they, the only argument they say is we are still modern political thought whenever we make this argument. I do not think this is going down. Not, I do not think this is a response to the argument itself that there are other ways to uh, try and there are other ways to try and get outside of norms and forms of knowledge production that did not that do not include uh, uh, that do not include uh, conspiracy theories told by anti-Semitic. Uh, white authors means it means that they are not actually getting outside of, outside of any sort of uh, any sort of state sponsored knowledge production. In fact, they only lock in the violent systems of, of white knowledge production that have created these problems in the first place. The only way to get around this is the alternative, which they conceived an alternative solvency arguments, which means that systems of capital, any logical systems of capital, are always able to uh, undermine any sort of resistance to the system by I, by identifying uh, differences between ideologically opposed groups. I want you to look at the rest of the affirmative. The affirmative is all about identifying all about ideologically distinguishing themselves from the sovereign and 
distinguishing themselves from uh, normative forms of knowledge production. The alternative is the only way to get outside of this because it's the only way that we can actually uh, withdraw our uh, withdraw our tax and support involvement with a uh, system of capital. That is the only way we can get outside the system in a way in which we can uh, accurately see what it looks like and see how the uh, affirmative criticism or how the negative criticism would actually get access to any sort of policy. Um, let's see. I also think the next argument they make something that uh, they classify the new as conspiracy theory. They only, they only, they are only responses. They are they identify as an artifact. People want to call it conspiracy theory, but I think that the uh, affirmative answer. I think that the uh, affirmative itself is a response to this argument that the entirety, the entirety of the affirmative is a, is a is, is the affirmative is basically filled with all these arguments and all of these claims that saw that modern sovereignty assumed that Cthulhu is a conspiracy theory. And that's why uh, it is hedged out of normative discussions of knowledge. I think this is the reason why their uh, appeals to Western notions of rationality rationality via their solvent arguments about how they could use Cthulhu's arms to make OTEC means that they are still trying to appeal to some form of Western solvent me solvency mechanism, which means that they're still uh, linking back to their affirmatives. Most of Chris and the only thing you have to get around this is the alternative, which we'll talk about uh, in a quick sec. The link terms are the internal link arguments, I guess. They say that they question more than they say they question more than power structure. Which you prospect the number of link, which you get that they are still asking the wrong questions. Should not about it. Should not be about making uh, making current systems of uh, government and power better. But instead, it should be about why we have gotten here, how we have allowed modern systems of government to allow the system of government to create the system of government in the first place. Our argument is that the uh, critique of the only is the only uh, ethics to the only position within this. We could actually ask that question. The government is not asking, which means you all only vote for the alternative. And also, is reason why they uh, also is reason why they link to back to the critics. They also say that uh, they say that they create a conversation. With jump towards the ideological change, but right now they have continued the ethics argument, which indicates that right now we are literally incapable of uh, having those types of discussions in the first place. Yeah, because it is literally impossible for us to get outside of the ideological systems of the way that capital controls the ways in which we think. We have been conditioned to speak in certain ways, which means that the affirmative uh, inability to get outside of that just means it renders them insolvent and linking back to the critics. They also say they, they are uh, they, they, uh, that questioning leads to a changing of the truth. I think that this argument has largely been answered by my response to be uh, number two. So. The MGR articulation of the solvency mechanism is that they're introducing the idea of conspiracy as being just a new mode of knowledge production. Judge, if you've ever heard of a conspiracy app before, that means they don't solve. Okay, the argument, well, the next, uh, I don't know. No, okay, fine. I think that that's already covered. It's all over. The alternative now. <clears throat> They say permutation, but they concede the they concede the alternative one alternative, alternative solvency argument, which indicates that the permutation literally makes no sense because capitalism happens in my uh, so saying itself by identifying uh, ideological differences between opposed groups. The argument is that the permutation is nothing but the identification of difference between the uh, alternative and the affirmative, which means that the permutation is never actually solved because it's the only way for, for capital to become more to be able to appear, to appear more self correct and benevolent. But second, uh, to disadvantage, to you need to disadvantage the permutation versus the particular link from uh, it is never one is never one link that we read that you're not going to have an adequate answer to that I am just uh, uh, beating them all over the bar. I, uh, 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 I guess uh, using all over the flow to beat them. Our argument is that whenever they lock themselves into one particular uh, one particular rejection of uh, governmentality, means that they are, are never able to actually get outside the system over to question it. Secondly, the second is that is the parallax. The argument is that uh, the, uh, the parallax is the astrological phenomenon by which an object closer to the observer moves at, uh, moves at a much faster rate than an object further away. Our argument is that the same is true of ideology. That whenever you uh, watch ideology moving at a slow at a much faster rate closer to you, you uh, take for granted the larger the macro the macro ideological implications of your policy, which means that they forget about the macro, uh, which means that systems of capital are only allowed to become uh, stronger and uh, stronger at the macro level. And that now to the line ball, and they say that they are the internal to solve that because they need to open up the spaces that already entered that, uh, have already made arguments about how their uh, spaces that they, that they open only maintain current systems of governmentality. Next, our, the, the MG number three on the alternative stack, they lead to questioning of power structures again. The argument is that because of the ethics argument, the ethics impact that they are there, and that is impossible to do because of modern ideological implications and the ways in which we've been conditioned to only speak in terms of the government. The uh, idea that they all have to make themselves identifiable by, by sovereign knowledge by, by sovereign knowledge entities means that they are not able to get outside of this. Furthermore, the alternative the only way, the only way to uh, adequately reposition the subject away from modern systems and ideological systems of capital that are misconceived. Next argument: They say the deconstruction get a deconstruction capitalism leads to uh, means that we don't actually get to ideological discussion, but, a de but uh, we are not a deconstruction of capital. We are an ideological withdrawal from that system, which means that we are not uh, a blowing up of cap systems of capital, but instead we are uh, the, uh, but instead we are stepping away. From the system and understanding the ethical implications that that cap that capitalism has, which means we're the only uh, system that accurately repositions the subject in a way that allow that uh, the that the subject can then question normative modes of knowledge production. The framework arguments. 
Extended world of Gauss can see that, 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 that this indicates the idea of this, that the only, only world of value you have to is to, is to interrogate systems of capital now. So, uh, Lyme Bolin, they said that you've heard the questions about ideology and pedagogy, but I think that the ethics argument as well as the particulars and just add on the alternative mean that they don't actually get access to that uh, ideological and pedagogical questioning now. You can extend the number three argument that we have to understand why we got here uh, and why we, uh, why we enforce government's howling means that the case of our questions and the entire the affirmative not to the links. I want the link number one. They say that they've always discussed hegemonic ideologies, that they allow the case with this, but I think that they are still trying to define themselves by government terms, which means that they're never actually able to get outside of this. That's the government tally argument and the, and the particularism argument. I also want the number two argument, that they, that, they, that they are not able to solve one problem until they solve every problem. They argue that they have to question first before they can solve, but that's not a response to the idea that they don't get outside of systems of government tally. Now I want the, 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 the impacts, I want the ethics impact. They say that they question capital's justification, but that does not answer the idea that and we only ever know what is ethical based off what capital tells us, which means that they're not able to get outside of that. Okay, so I do my own wars and I need to cheat, but if you don't do it that way, that's totally cool. But say again, sorry. Sorry, uh, uh, for the order, uh, I kind of do my LORs like down on the new sheet, um, but uh, otherwise it's going to be like solvency, um, some F link turns, I guess, and then some K analysis starting on the framework and the uh, impacts. For reference specific. Yeah, I'll let you know what arguments I'm looking at when I'm doing that. Okay, is uh, anyone not ready? Alright. UT Tyler H. J. wins this debate round for three pretty compelling reasons. The first is that the affirmative has the inability to actually defend their method of conspiracies as a counter method of knowledge production. The second is that they link pretty hard with their criticism, which is an instant reason to reject the affirmative advocacy. But third, they don't properly respond to the criticism, which means we outweigh and turn the affirmative. But now, looking specifically on their inability to actually defend the idea of conspiracy theories, there are three compelling LOC arguments that are extended and elaborated on the MO, which means that conspiracy is a, is a bad method. The first is on solvency, the LOC number one indicating that conspiracy Conspiracy is a bad method of counter knowledge production. It's just silly white storytelling talking about how George Bush died, did 9 11 and there were giant squids in the ocean that are actually the real God who created the universe. That doesn't actually do anything because uh, if you look at the conceited or the, yeah, the conceited, um, Third solvency, uh, you can see the third solvency argument out of the LLC that indicates that the state is just going to discount your method and your movement is going to get to it and it's never going to work. But more, uh, more specifically, I articulate within the LLC that uh, other modes of counter knowledge production is key to actually deconstructing state knowledge production, right? Like refugees telling you narratives of how they're not actually an individual that belongs to a state and, and they're, they're nomads who transgress ideas of citizenship and boundaries, or uh, trans and queer people talking about how they don't have static, uh, you know, ontological understandings of themselves because they're constantly changing and evolving and becoming these. Or the types of counter knowledge production that is needed to actually question and challenge state power because these are instances in which the state knowledge production has been violent towards different individuals and they need to express their personal struggle. This is the conceded, uh, yeah, this is the conceded warrant for why uh, the counter knowledge production is good, uh, but uh, specifically only uh, to the ones of the negative. The next LLC argument that means uh, that, that they don't handle is the LLC solvency number three, indicating that uh, their method of uh, imposing conspiracy theories on the state doesn't account for the fact that the state still commits like anti-black violence, right? So even if the state has a different understanding of what is true and false, that doesn't mean that their notions of productivity and valuability as a human being change. That means that even the world of the affirmative, the state is going to do things like commit anti-black violence because they perpetuate a capitalist ideology that indicates people are only worth what they can produce, and that is still problematic because they don't solve uh, back from the last case. Argument I want is the LC number five, which they totally cold concede, indicating that their uh, neoliberal idea of like academic individualism being able to instigate change through conversation is just the same kind of academia that the state has been using to justify its existence since the very beginning, and they don't respond to this argument, which means it's cold conceded to solve to take out of it. Next, I want a few arguments indicating that they looked at the criticism. First is the AC framework number three, indicating that bad methodology leads to bad policy. They literally indicate that their goal is to make government more benevolent. That probably seems like the same reformism that allows the government to perpetuate it's, it's, bio, it's, it's a biopolitical neoliberal exercise of power on individuals in the first place. But secondly, they throw all the dichotomy between irrational and rational, which is the same to kind of appeal to moral intuition that the state uses to exclude any sort of counter knowledge production that doesn't fit with the regime. But the last is their delineation between true and false. These are all arguments that were in the LC about how their rhetoric of truth and, and, and falseness and how they are redefining what is true by saying that. Cthulhu is real are all attempts to still solidify this notion that the state can uh, entirely discount notions of like black suffering by saying that's not real, that doesn't actually exist, and because it doesn't exist, that means we can ignore it. 
Last, the K outweighs and turns the entirety of the affirmative that are in this. They can see the world about without a we means that they we exclude the affirmative offense because we and again that the only thing that matters is to help subject from uh, positions or uh, describes their relationship to capital. They don't do that explicitly when the PMC that which means the only chance uh, for some is the MG V articulation, which you probably shouldn't give them. Secondly, they cold can simply link three of the criticism and they don't do very much work on link one and two, which means there's always going to be a link to criticism, which means that the problem doesn't solve. But lastly, our two impacts outweigh and turn the affirmative. Whenever you extend across the death right impact, the purpose articulation. Okay, just ethics. Okay, so ethics turns the entirety of the affirmative because they don't respond to the actual uh, articulation of how capitalism structures our ability to ethically deliberate. They just say that, oh, we have the ability to question cap, which is good. But insofar as they are perpetuating the capitalist ideology within the context of the PMC, they could be reactionary and say, oh, no, 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 we are, our, our ethics aren't capitalist. But whenever they're still operating within the idea of state knowledge production, the idea that we can allow our ethical uh, 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 answers to be constructed by capitalism, that means they can never solve the act. Meaning that we do not link back to the criticism at all. You make a lot of you are trying to 
uh, create a better sovereign, which is the link to the criticism, uh, in no way is it at the point where we're trying to interrogate a power structure. If anything, there's only going to be erasure in, in a world where you don't in, in, interrogate the power structure. This is the only valid sovereignty mechanism, meaning the AF engages the state in the only solvent way. Uh, on to links. A lot of the uh, LOR is that we don't uh, we don't answer back any of the link debate. However, we tell you uh, that we are the internal link to solving back for this ideology, which means it's always going to come down to those internal link arguments, which is a lot of the same thing that we saw in the framework debate. But whether or not we are able to access the state in the same way, whether or not we are able to whether or not we are able to reconstruct what a cons conspiracy theory means, we. I, the, the, you don't do a good enough job answering back your third internal link argument where we talk about the internalization of truth. We talk about how the only way to engage mass solvency is by first engaging the way in which the power structure creates norms that would engage the that would engage the way that the masses that would engage the way that the masses I have an I have an a relationship with ideology. Do you want me to go? I know what you were pointing something at me. No, okay, no, we're good. On to the off. First off. We're going for the perm, but we need to extend across the disadvantages to doing the alt alone. You do not do a good enough job answering back transition words. We said the only way to avoid transition words is always going to be to do the perm. Uh, you're stepping away from a state uh, that only engages in capitalism, meaning that we're always going to see some sort of transition words in an elite co-optation, uh, yet add a second disadvantage, which is going to be erasure. We say that the way in which the MO says we need to step away from the state means that you're always going to erase the, the violent impacts that happen within the state. Uh, for, you first have to engage power structures, uh, meaning, and then you have an answer. So I'm just going to go to the net benefits of the firm. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Um, I think that she kind of says add a new disadvantage to the alternative. I don't think that the erasure argument is really uh, constructed as a unique disadvantage to the alternative anywhere else in the debate. Until the PMR, that is. Yeah, I'm answering back a lot of the framework argumentation that you make about how like we can't be solvent unless we step completely outside of the state. So I, I don't think that comes up to the MO. The word erasure is new in the PMR. Uh, it, erasure being framed as a dissent is also new in the PMR. Okay. Is everybody ready? Yes. Okay. You say the perm makes no sense because one of the, it, it, it seeks to identify difference. We say we recognize the importance of change within a power structure, meaning that identifying that difference is always going to be a, a, a prerequisite to having any sort of way of deconstructing. And you say we are uh, we function within a parallax. We say we are the macro way of solving this. Uh, like our, our third internal link argument is that you can't have any access to solving that uh, mass ideology without first changing the power structure because not all these individuals are going to be able to have that moment with themselves, meaning that we are the macro by first changing the power structure. We change the way the individuals internalize that. You also say that modern ideology would dictate that we always speak in terms of the government, we say we speak in a way that understands the government's relationship with ideology, um, and really our use of the government is always going to be key to accessing solvency. Therefore, there's three key reasons why you're going to vote for the perm judge. The first is that we deconstruct the state with a recognition of the harms, uh, meaning that we always have access to, to changing some sort of truth dialogue that always comes from the state, meaning that even in a world of the LOC where you step back and, uh, like, and have some sort of disconnect from capitalism, you're always going to have a state that's reconstructing, uh, that re replicates the impacts that come from that knowledge production, meaning the only way that you can solve back is by first questioning that. And the second is that we avoid transition wars. And even if you wanted to vote for the LOC, the perm is going to be a better way to get there because we say that we are essentially access in the LOC in the same time by first questioning power structures, meaning we're avoiding transition wars and also having access uh, to reconstructing the way in which the state works. What? Can you answer that one? Yeah. They're saying that we're biting our own arguments. Right. I already answered back. We're not going to be a link to the K because we're, we are functioning in a world where we replicate the state uh, instead of, of a static.
Just checking his uh, alien adventure. All right. All right. Save us all the embarrassment of things again. <laughs> So I think this is a really good day. I think a lot. Um, I'm gonna unfortunately have to risk incurring the wrath of our Lord Cthulhu and Bodneg. Uh, here's why. So I um, begin the debate with the two sort of competing framework pl uh, framework claims. I have come with the PMR that uh, rhetoric should come first and informs all and informs how institutions function. And I have coming out of the MO slash LOR that uh, the most important question is just like who's messing up capitalism. I don't have a claim from the app at any point why the negative doesn't access rhetoric or discourse. And I uh, don't have an explanation of why the affirmative framework excludes the um, negative, like why, why the alternatives not able to capture that. But I do have a lot of pretty good analysis coming out of the block that explains why uh, in a world where the affirmative fails to reconcile with capitalism, uh, you're fundamentally incapable of resolving like, the larger concerns of the debate. So I basically invited this debate in terms of like who's who is best addressing capitalism? I think that um, at the end of the debate, there's a clear link with particularism that remains persistently unanswered. I think that the PMR spin of trying to recognize the state in order to change it is good. It's just a little bit too late, and there needs to be a better impact to this. Transition wars is a great way to go, but it needs to be more than one sentence in the LG, and it needs to be really clearly explained why the affirmative doesn't like link to that. Um, 
So, in other words, I evaluate particular as a link. I assess that insofar as there's still a possibility of you being capitalist, ethics are just not possible. I think this analysis is really clever, especially from the end of the ML about ethics. And uh, in order where that's the case, then the parallax, which I, which I thought was delightful, uh, means that we probably uh, can't do the permutation, so I don't know. Um, as far as uh, thoughts or comments, um, I think we'll start with each speech in order. I think the PMC is uh, really good. I think that you do um, yourself a bit of a disservice later on the way by letting PMC fall out of like every subsequent speech. Like the fact that the LOC like sort of talks about the the app, but like doesn't really like make any really extensive arguments means that the MG should be the second you get done with theory, and I think 